Almighty God. We thank God for being here today. Uh, First Lady uh, did, a, did a good job up here. Uh, started another praise and worship service here just not too long ago. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. Thank God. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Yes, he is. He certainly is a good God. Hallelujah. 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 And not only is he a good God, but he's not complicated either. As the, as the topic said up here, Jesus, it's not complicated. Jesus is not complicated. See, sometimes in days of old, you'll find out how it was a lot more complicated than it is right now. It was way more complicated than it is right now. But Jesus made it not complicated. Thank God for that. God is a good God. God is a good God. He does heal our bodies. He does touch our minds. Hallelujah. There's no other God that I know. There's no God like God. Hallelujah. There's, there's, there, they, have, they call that they try to say that there are other gods, but we have the God that answers by fire. Amen. We have a God that answers and that Amen. lives. Hallelujah. Like I said before in, in another uh, sermon, some people might say, that this microphone right here could be their God. How can, a, how can this be somebody's God when you can handle it like this? You can toss it in the garbage. You can break it up. You can throw it down. You can stomp on it. How can this be somebody's God? That don't make sense, right? I'm a logical man. That don't make sense to me that this could be somebody's God where I can go, boom, you're God. Your God's done now. <laughs> but they do silly things like that, right? And so I want you all to understand, you have a God to wear... He's going to always be God. You understand? He's going to always be God. No matter how, if you get disappointed in him, guess what? He's still going to be God. When you're happy with him, guess what? He's still going to be God. So no matter what you feel, no matter how you feel, he's still going to be God. So it would behoove us to appreciate what he has done in our life. Right? Because I heard that I heard it said when we uh when you give thanks at least room. For more. So I thank God for that. You all may be seated now. You all may be seated. So I thank God for what he has done. Right? And as I said, Jesus, it isn't complicated. It isn't complicated with Jesus. See, in days of old, guess what? In days of old, it was complicated. It was complicated because get this. You just didn't go to to the Lord yourself. You didn't just go to him. You went through the priests. You understand me? You went through the priests. And the priests took care of a lot of it. Right? So now we know that we can go to Jesus ourselves. We can. Now, we still should go to that man of God because it says, is there any sick among you? Have him call for the elders of the church. So we still should do that. But we don't have to run frantically into the church if, if we can't get there and say, oh, well, we can't get help now because we can't get to the man of God. Because when the word of God said, when there's two or three gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst. Right? And so we know that we can call on the Lord and we can get an answer. But in days of old, it was much more complicated. Before Jesus came down and descended down from earth. It was much more complicated. See, back then, if you sinned, the priest had to offer whatever animal, whatever animal, whether it was a lamb or whether it was a goat or a bullock or whatever it was, he had to offer that animal for the sacrifices of sin. And he had to perform whatever, then whatever behavior needed to be performed needed to be performed. So if you had to stay without the camp for a while, if you had to dip seven times into something, if you had to, whatever it is, whatever that behavior was, you had to do it at that point in time. But see, thank God that, see, that kind of, that kind of action that you did with the priest, the priest giving, sacrificing whatever kind of animal it was and the person performing whatever kind of bodily exercise it was, that never ever took away sin. 
and never took it away. Right? And this is really important for you all to understand. See, this is letting us understand the significance of Jesus. See, and this is why we can never take Jesus out. We can never separate him from God. See, a lot of times in different, in different religions, they believe in God. You all are aware of that, right? In different religions, they believe in God. The Muslims, they call him Allah. In other religions, they may call him something else. But what I'm telling you is different religions believe in God, but not every religion believes that Jesus Christ was the Savior of mankind. And this is, and what I'm about to impart you with, what I'm about to give you, what I'm about to share with you is going to let you know the significance of Jesus. The significance of Jesus. Because without him, wow. We would have so much to do for our sins. You would have to go out and get some kind of animal, bring it to the priest. The priest would have to, to cut the animal, to, uh, cut the animal and have the blood shed. And you would have to do some kind of bodily exercise to get sin removed or to get some kind of blessing from God. But like I said, it never, it never cleansed a sin. It never took the sin away. It never ever, uh, it was only a covering of sin. It was only a covering. Like for example, if there was a hole in the wall back there, if there was a hole in the wall back there and I just put a picture over it, it didn't fix the wall, did it? It just covered it. I'm just trying to give you a good understanding of what it, what it was. So it never took the sin away, it just covered it. So now it wasn't seen, but it never took it away, right? It never took it away. But, but see, so now we got to ask ourselves this. So it never took it away, and there was a covering. But see, what you have to understand that that was, a, it was a treatment. It was a treatment, but not a cure. It was a treatment, not a cure. Only a treatment. It managed the sin, but it never cured the sin. Until Jesus came on the scene, and then Jesus, Jesus, he took the sin away. He took it away. He did something so much more than, than, uh, than anyone else could ever do for us. That that nothing else could do it for us. No, no bullocks, no, no goats, no lamb could do it for us what Jesus did. No one could do 